All right, so here we are. We're going to do the Mad Libs assignment for the first week in the Intro to JavaScript uh, Watts 3020 course. Um, so we'll go into this repo here out on um, GitHub SU Web Dev. And the first thing we'll do is we'll fork it. And I'm going to fork it to my personal repo, personal account, that is. So I'll have a copy of Mad, the Bots 3020 Mad Libs here. Then I want to clone this down to my local work area. So I'm going to use the SSH, clone with SSH, because I've set up my public private SSH keys. And I usually just go into a terminal. I'm working on a Mac here. If you're on a Windows, you might want to be going to your Git Bash. And let's see where I am here, PWD. Okay, I'm going to go into my projects folder, which I've already created with a make dirt projects. Um, and let's see what I've got here. So if I have a Watts uh, 3020, no I don't. So I'm going to make a directory, Watts 3020, CD into that. 20, and there I am. And this is where I'll do the clone. So I get clone and then paste that address that I picked up from um, from github.com. I have a passphrase. You don't need to have one. That's why I had to enter that extra um, little bit there. And now um, I can see that I've got my Watt 3020 cloned. So I am going to just open that in code. Now I've set up code to be in my path so it can recognize that and recognize the code command from the terminal. So now I've set up, I've got this here, I've got my file system here, and um, uh, there's an index.html. I've got my live server running, so if I just right click on index.html, open with live server, you can see that this shell of an application is running and you know nothing really happens. But basically I'm gonna be collecting a bunch of information from a user that I can then insert into a poem, Cap oh, oh Captain, My Captain by Walt Whitman, and create um, a Mad Lib with it. Um, so to do this, if you look at just to review, we've got this um, index, we've got this index.html. You'll probably want to change the t author to be yourself. And we've linked in main.css. So there is some CSS built. You're free to enhance that. It's not part of the assignment, but could be considered a stretch goal. And then in main, we have, uh, well, you can see index also links in using the script tag. So that's how we get to external files using the script tag, JavaScript, uh, main.js. So this is where we'll do all of our um, JavaScript coding. And then we've got um, some uh, HTML for us to attach various things that we create in JavaScript too. So let's go into main.js and you can see here there is a lot of to-dos and when you're done of course you want to clean up all of this. You don't want to leave this in your code. Just delete it all but while you're working on it you definitely want it there to help you see what you need to do. Um, so uh, for what basically you're going to do is you're going to follow these to-dos and you're going to create a variable using the let. So you're going to declare your variables using the let. Um, and then the name of the variable equals and then the prompt will collect the information from the user. So um, I'll just give you a hint. And prompt, we don't, it's really windows.prompt, but windows is a global variable so we don't have to use that in here. We can just use uh, the prompt. Um, I'm going to turn off this, this so I can untoggle that live server because otherwise it'll, it'll every, every change I make it'll open up the browser and I don't want that to happen. It will slow me down. So um, first of all you have the, the prompt which is the message that you give your user telling them what you want them to enter. If you want, the default is that it will be blank, a blank input box, but you can um, um, put in a default answer. So if I do that, you'll notice um, if I run this that the answer will be filled in. Now I like to do this because it saves me time when I'm testing. I don't have to type this in for everything. 
Um, and but you may want to do that for testing, and then when you're in production, you would take it out because you don't want to like not let the user think of their own answer. But anyway, that's just something I I do a lot for testing. Now notice. There are single quotes and double quotes. They both work. It's best to be consistent, so I really should change these. The thing is, you can't like have a single quote at the beginning and a double quote at the end. That will be an error. And you'll see errors show up um, like that. You'll see red lines. It doesn't recognize that you've terminated that. So that's kind of, um, you want to have that be consistent. Um, so using the following command, prompt command, you're going to so you have a whole bunch of these. OK, um, so let's just do a couple and then I'll just do the rest so that you don't have to watch me type in all of this stuff. But um, let's see, author, what is your name? And so I might say, I might put in a prompt, Becky. And then I'm going to say let adjective now the names of these variables is imp are important because they're going to be used in, in other code uh, prompt. And you can copy and paste these things to make it quicker too. Um, what is... Uh, uh, give me a descriptive term. Okay, I could say beautiful. Beautiful. Okay, so that essentially gives us, that's an example of um, creating a variable and then getting your user to enter it with a, with a descriptive term. So if, if I run this now, um, you can see Ms. and then Becky. Yeah, okay, so that is how you can kind of get this going. And like I said, you could, you could copy and paste these things, but be careful with copy and paste. It's real easy to make mistakes. But vehicle and give me a vehicle vehicle name and um, bicycle say so that's kind of how you can work well give me a moment I'm going to fill in the rest of these and then we'll look further all right so now um, what we can see here is that um, I have filled in a whole bunch of variables and prompts. And now let's see what happens when I run this. So I've opened with live server. And because I'm using those defaults, I don't have to type anything. Now, obviously, you want people to type things in. And I could, you know, type in, uh, you know, I could stop and type over that. Um, but I'm just doing this to get this tested. OK, so it's still not really doing anything for me. I, I'm actually not done with my to do's. But I just want to show you that you can look at inspect and, and we can start becoming aware of the types of errors that you'll see with JavaScript. So you can see that I, I am catching an error, user number not defined. And um, if I click on that, it's going to take me to the place where it's not defined. So I haven't actually written this code yet um, for user number. We'll get to that right now. But this, I, I think it's really a good idea to kind of run your testing phase with the console open so that you can see these errors. Because the important part of programming is debugging. You're never going to write perfect code the first time. If you do, congratulations, but mostly you're, it's, a, it's an iterative process where you write a little code, you try to debug it, you know, get that section working, um, and the console can help with that. So we have one more thing to do, which is to put in the section numbers. And there's a couple of to-dos here. One, we are going to um, have a user number. Let's see. Oh, I want to turn off my live server there. So let user number equal prompt. Um, enter your lucky number, maybe. You can, you can just make up whatever you want for these prompts as long as it gets you some some data and I'll just enter a lucky number for me and um, the next thing is make two more numbers called number one and number two number two and number three and have them apply mathematical operations to this user number so I'll say let number two equal user number plus one and let number three equal user 
number divided by 3. And you can do any operation you want here, and I really recommend playing with this and trying out a few operations because you're going to see some different kinds of results and sometimes not always what you would expect. So now that we've done that, um, well, let's run this and then we'll take a look at the code that you don't have to write. That, that we'll app, Let's run it first and then we'll look at that because that's interesting too. So um, we'll just come over here and open with live server. Okay, so I'm just going to click through all of these things and then 11. Oh, okay. And now it looks like it's working. And if I inspect and look at my console, hopefully no errors. Great. Okay, let's see what happened there. So it took all of my words and it substituted them into this poem. Um, the, you know, so go ahead and, and have fun reading this. Um, you know, you can look at the original poem and then you can look at what you've created. Um, so we've, we've, we've created a Mad Lib here. Um, now, notice the numbers. So the first number, 11, was what I entered. So that was used here. And then notice this number. I added 1 to 11 and I got 111. Okay, what happened there? So it didn't, I mean, 11 plus 1 should be 12. Well, when you add a string, which is what you're collecting from the con from the browser there, to a number, when you use the plus operator, you get, it just concatenates it. So that's why you get that. But when you do a, an operation like division, it actually runs it and gives you a floating point number. So these are things to kind of play around with and get used to. This is to introduce you to variables, um, a little bit about types and operations. Um, but let's take a look back at the code that you didn't have to write that turned all of those variables that you collected, like I used Ms, I used bicycle, into that text. Because I think that's interesting too. So it created some variables down here. And notice this tick mark. This tick mark is called an interpolation. It, it sets you up for what's called interpolation. So instead of, it's, it looks kind of like a quote or a single quote, but it's the back tick, the same thing you use to open terminal in Visual Studio Code. And when you surround your text, and these are how you reference variables in vanilla JavaScript, um, dollar, and then here's the variable name, it will interpolate or substitute those variables into a string for you. So that's how they are able to, so like they create the title, this, oh, miss my miss by Becky, by using this interpolation of the variables and creating a string. And then um, you're going to learn more about this query selector. It grabbed the ID Madlib title that was in your HTML here, and it set the inner HTL to that title. So that this is where we're going to work our way into doing this on our own, but I just want to point out how this worked here. And then for the whole text, it's one large interpolation where you just substituted in the variables that you collected for the, um, for the actual code, for the actual big string that you printed out. And um, then it used the query selector to grab the Mad Libs text and apply the inner HTML. So that's how that works. And um, I hope that this helped you. Now let's see what's next, what do we have to do next. So we need to get this checked in. So let's, I always start with get status. Yes, I changed that file. Um, I probably also, let's turn this off. I probably also want to re always remember to make it mine, you know, Becky Peltz. Okay, so now get status. I should have both of them changed. Git add dot. That's going to say add everything below this directory. Git commit dash m. Let's see, added, added prompts, updated title name, updated name, git push. Okay, and so that should push that up to GitHub for me. And I'm going to head back over here. Let's see if I can close this out. I want to go back in here to 
my oh that's SG web dev I want to go to my repositories okay 3020 mad libs here we go so if I look at this I should see that yes index HTML changed 30 seconds ago the JS file changed 37 seconds ago so I'm all up to date there so the next step is just like you did with HTML and CSS files, we want to host these. So you can have your two URLs to turn in. Then you have the master branch, save. And then we want to just wait a little bit here. So we have, wait for that to turn green. I wish it wasn't so far down on the page. But basically we're just going to you know, get this up and then I'm going to open it and I'm going to show you something weird. So the prompts don't really work well when you open a new tab. It just, see, it runs it, but it's all null. And that's a, I'll, I'll send you something on Slack. There's something that Chrome changed so that if it doesn't have an haptic tab, it won't run a prompt. But if you refresh, you'll get it to go. And if you paste that link into a browser, it'll work. And if you do it on Safari, it'll work. But opening a new tab, opening a new tab in Chrome, it'll just run it without prompting. But anyway, here we're ready to go. Test it. And there it looks like it's working okay. So now if you want, if you want, you could go back and clear out your defaults so that when a person runs this, you know, they would have to type it all in. But I'll tell you in terms of grading, it does help me if you have those defaults there. I can still type things in over them to test that. But it's much quicker to test with for both you and I if you have defaults. So there you go, that works and we'll just grab this and go back. It's always nice to finish this off by pasting that in. All right, so that's the assignment one. Okay, hope you have a good time, bye.